sure. And a very good morning to you here on Manx Radio TT. Hope you're all all right this morning. Thanks to, uh, to Tom and also thanks to Philip McCallum for coming in. Just a reminder, we've got an hour delay this morning, obviously due to the, it's not been so good over the, over the night, but it is going to get better as the day goes on. We'll have a Met check in about 10 or 12 minutes' time with the Met office down there. 10.30, roads will close around the course. Then at 11.10 this morning, the Classic TT Superbikes, the Max Grand Prix Senior Junior Lightweight and all newcomers A and B will get out for one lap. Then at midday, it's the Locate.im Junior Classic TT race over four laps. Then at two, another practice for the MGP Senior Junior Lightweights. Uh, no newcomers in that one. That's just over one lap. Then at three o'clock, RST Superbike Classic TT race. Again, that's over four laps. And then at uh, 5, 10, 17, 10, Classic Racer Magazine Classic TT Lap of Honour. And that's going to be for one lap. And then at quarter past six, the MGP Newcomers race over four laps with roads scheduled to open around the TT course no later than 10 past eight. But of course, we'll keep you up to date with the very latest on that. And as Chris said, we'll have an update from the Met Office very shortly. Do get in touch this morning, 166177. Just start your message with TT. You can email studio at radiott.com. Follow us on the Max Radio TT Facebook and Twitter pages. And if you miss any of the chat show, you can watch again on the Max Radio portal at manxradio.com. Uh, lots of messages in. We've got lots of good luck messages so can we wish Colombia's Daniel Fernandez good yeah. luck in the newcomers B race today do say safe uh, good luck to Andrew Dudgeon as well local mm-hmm. lad mm-hmm. yeah okay any more what's out there oh hang on there, oh some more questions for Phil but unfortunately he's hobbled off now he, he has hobbled, he has hobbled off, off and we better better not stop him uh, Sir Charles Williams we his questions but we, oh yeah, oh, <laughs> no yeah you answer actually yeah go on, go on read, read it out then and we'll just and what's this one can you ask Phil about this unusual thing I've never seen it happen at the TT since it was about 97 or 98 at Windy Corner during the Wednesday race day the one lap senior practice out of nowhere a load of HRC mechanics turned up and Phil stopped just after Windy the team put the bike on the stand quick wheel change and off Phil went guest to bed time in and a few other bits. Do you mm. think he was allowed to do that? <laughs> well, it would be in a race, would it? It would have to yeah. be, uh, it, it must have been, well, not even in a practice session, I don't suppose, but I don't, in those days, you know, things were a little bit different, you know. <laughs> we weren't so conscious of uh, <laughs> rules, regulations, Could health you imagine and safety. It? <laughs> that now, John McGuinness pulls a windy corner and the Norton boys put a new rear tyre in. <laughs> Goodness me. Good morning, Charles. Good How morning. Are How morning. are you? Very well, love a brighter. Yeah, good. And mm. Brian Reed, morning, Reed, are you well? Good morning, yes, very good. How was last night then? You, you, the, 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 R, the RST legends did it? Yeah, the right? legends did it. It was great. It was really, really good. It was a fantastic vibe in there last night. It went really well. Full house there, uh, Tom was yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Lots of questions. Pauline Hale, David Hale. Yeah, Steve that was Wynne very emotional, stage, yeah. really. We had John on, 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 the, on the stage and obviously uh, Steve Wynn and Pauline, Pauline Halewood. And uh, it was it was fantastic. It really was. And the, the good thing for me is, of course, I was mm. there then back in the day, you know. So, uh, uh, and I know Pauline quite well, and uh, she's a lovely lady. And it was just great. It was a, it's a wonderful evening. I've got to ask you about that day. You obviously remember it, Charlie. No, you, well, you, you, or do, do you not no, remember it? When I say I was here, ah. I couldn't remember, Chris, why. For some years, why I my memory of that weekend, I Saturday Sunday, was a bit sketchy. Because I was in Spa doing a 24-hour race for Honda. I'd come here, I'd practiced, and then we, we had to go out to Spa and do a 24-hour race, and then come back. And then I think I think I actually later in the week, uh, I finished second in the 250 race. So I was definitely here, mm-hmm. and I remember that race a little bit as well, because Chas Mortimer beat me the bastard. I remember <laughs> well. Morning. <laughs> it's, 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 quite, it's quite funny, you know, because last night, um, when, when uh, Philip came onto the stage and he walked past me and I was introducing Nick and Philip came past me, he said he should never have won that race, you know. And I thought, we're all the blinking saying, we think, we think back to the day and thinking about what went on and there's all these rivalries. Of course, we laugh about them now, mm. you know, but we st- it's still there, you know. Is uh, this Nick winning the 93 Formula One? Yeah, that's right, right yeah. yeah. Right. And I can't remember the, like I heard you saying on the way up, you know, Nick, Nick is the walking encyclopedia of all he things is, TT, he? isn't he? He's, he's and quite uh, good and John's quite, John's quite Oh, John's not knowledgeable, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Nick sort of goes right back to his father's blinking mm-hmm. day, you know, because mm-hmm. his dad won a couple of TTs mm-hmm. as well, you know, Alan Jeff. So. It is. Uh, more messages, I think. Yeah, well, we've it. got one for Brian, because Ooh. this is from Don in Stockport, who says, if you want to see and hear the finest onboard lap of the TT, oh, yeah. Brian's <laughs> lap will have your eyes out on stalks. Do you remember really? doing that lap? I do indeed, yes. Um, yeah, the uh, backpack, um, you had to wear it in those days, you know, it was a bit, uh, a bit uh, disconcerting, you know, to have that on your back, but uh, yeah, it was a good, it was a good lap, yeah, and 
you know, went on to win that uh, the junior race that year, so that made it a bit more special, yeah. <laughs> he won the junior race after you did the lap with the uh, with the camera on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of younger younger ones now that still say to me about that's how they've learnt the TT circuit by watching that video. So it's still a bit more relevant for newcomers because it's on the 250 what, rather than. What, but you're on the 250 then when you did it, yeah. TZ 250 Yamaha, yeah, um, yeah. So it was, uh, you know, a lot of people still mention it. Yeah, it's here actually. There's, uh, I've got it here. On the, it's on the official Alman TT one as well, and it's from 1993 in the TZ250, and uh, the sound on it is absolutely. Because normally them just go, <laughs> but no, it's really. Oh, there's an advert coming on. We'll get rid of them adverts. Oh, I don't want to buy those sunglasses. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> it was quite funny, you know. Roger Marshall did a parade lap. Uh, sorry, a lap with a camera on the bike. Um, I don't know what year it was, but it was a long, long time ago. And as Brian said, they had to wear a backpack and it was all very bulky. And a, um, th I think the camera was on the tank so he couldn't get down behind the screen properly. And they've been trying all week in practice week to try and get some footage. And it, for whatever reason, they couldn't get it. So it was agreed by the clerk of the course that he'd go out just in front of the 250 race, you see, to get this footage. And uh, apparently he got to, uh, to Balacrain. I don't know how many minutes it was in, fr in front of him, but uh, he got to Balacrain and sat up to you know, to go into Balacrain, and he could hear what he thought were well, bikes behind him. He thought, oh, Jesus, they've caught me up. <laughs> he said, how embarrassing. You know? <laughs> anyway, he got his head down and carried on all the way there, and I think it was say, to, as far as Parliament Square. Certainly the next place, maybe it was Balaf, but somewhere where you've got to go quite slow and slow. And he said, I can still hear the beggars. <laughs> oh, my God. And he turned around, of course, there was nothing there. It was all the noise. As soon as he sat up on the bike, all mm. this, did, you know, this distortion with the, with the backpack and the, the camera and all that. Did you ever take your camera around, Charlie? No, I didn't, know. No, because no, no. nowadays, obviously, you see him with John with the, with the Ducati the other day, the little tiny little thing. Things about three inches long, just and they're glued on those oh, incredible just amazing. things. Aren't well, they? It, uh, up until very recently, that was the job of Ian Richards, the mm. guy that finished uh, sec uh, third in that race that Mike Hailwood won in 1978. Ian's been doing that job for a number of years. Mm. In those days, it was the uh, camera was quite small, you know, it was behind the screen, but the recorder you had to carry on your back, yeah, yeah. And uh, we, uh, we tried to mount the recorder on the back, we tried everything, you know, trying rubber mounting it and behind the seat and all that type of thing but uh, it caused distortion no matter where you put it so your body actually acts yeah, as yeah. a shock absorber yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so because um, you know what I wanted to do was you know go out on a race somewhere um, mm. and record it which hadn't been done really in 93 yeah. because mm. they didn't really do that sort of thing then. it was kind of mm. limited wasn't it there yeah. was the, the odd, and a lot of the times what the thing, a lot of things they cut into the shows was practice coverage wasn't it because there was there was a great one I think it was on the on the Oxford Products Chicati it was Robert Dunlop had one on I think Mark Farmer was his teammate on, on yeah. the thing and it kept cutting back to it and I, I remember what, oh, what I watched it not so long I'm thinking that's practice, that is. Yeah. The weather's completely different. That is definitely practice. I've got the video up here. And uh, listen to read the off the line. See if this will work. I don't know if it'll do or not. <laughs> Where's the speaker? I'm just about to hear it. That's it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brings back like memories, that does. Yeah, that's it. Eh? That's the top there. Yeah. Yeah, it says, yeah, I'm just waiting for him to roll it a bit now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, I suppose, when you s watch somebody's took footage... Took it flat, Charlie, took it flat. Yeah, I should think <laughs> so. When you watch well. somebody's footage, <laughs> you know, them going around the course, I mean, is there any part of you thinking, oh, I'd have done that differently? Yeah, well, yeah, maybe so. I don't it's know. It's easy to watch uh, somebody doing something and pick out mistakes, but, uh, um, you know, you're not uh, robots. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I had this comeback as... Um, Chris re remembers well t uh, four years ago now, 2014 really? and I remember the first night's practice I went out on this, this Norton and uh, about three or four newcomers came past me going down Crosby and stuff you know and as I got towards Ballacrane I caught them up and they'd all got the, 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 the new the jerseys on the jerkins and uh, I thought to myself well just see how good they are now then you know because this is the first time it's the very first practice that Saturday one was scrubs it was Monday in the evening practice and I thought well they've never been on a closed road before you know it's for how good they are expecting them to be all over the place they were fantastic 
fantastic. I couldn't believe it. It was probably me that was all over the place. <laughs> and I thought, they've learned that from videos, from onboard stuff. You know, it was amazing. What, the one at the back wasn't very good. Um, in fact, I, I thought to myself, he really should have stuck behind me because he didn't have a clue what he was doing, you know. And I was looking for this guy because he had Scott on the back of his leather sort of thing. I'm looking for this fellow called Scott. And then I realised he was wearing <laughs> Scott leathers manufactured by Jimmy <laughs> Air. <laughs> so I never did find him. But um, No, it, it's amazing the difference it's made, though. The only footage that, that um, I've got really at all, and it's quite embarrassing when I look at it, from 1980. And uh, it's, I'm on an F XJ550 Yamaha. And the D Yamaha are doing a film. They've commissioned, commissioned C.H. Wood in Bradford. They used to make the films in those days. And it was the very first film that Peter Duke sold commercially. The very first one. And uh, they asked me to uh, just go slow behind a car. Someone was hanging out the back of the car or a pickup, I can't remember. And we're stopping at various points. And I get off and talk about you know, what was going on. Oh, it was obviously on open roads. And they said, keep to 30 miles an hour. So I, I was riding out to Balacrain, 30 miles an hour. God, this is so slow, you know. <laughs> and when we got to Balacrain, they said, you can speed up a bit if you like. I said, well, you told me to keep to 30 miles an hour. He said, well, you're only doing about 25. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realised it was, in, it was a, 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 an import bike and it was in kilo kilometres per hour. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we speeded up after that. But it, when I look back on it now, it's, it, it, the whole thing's... Well, it's not embarrassing, it's the way it was in those days, and mm. it's quite good, actually. And what's especially good about that video, it's called The Island, is just what was going on here in Douglas, mm. around the place. It's grass track on uh, the, the playing fields down at Onken with, oh. with the world champion Ivan Major, mm. motocross up on Douglas Head, Andy Robert, in fact, factory Yamaha rider, all that sort of stuff, you know. Um, oh, trial, uh, arena trial, Mick Andrews. Mm. Uh, it was very much a Yamaha film, of course, but nevertheless, all the stuff that was going all on. All the stars, at the time. all the big stars in, yeah, the, in their respective yeah. fields during the day here mm. on the island. I think we just need to take a break and we need to get the Met Office in because it's very important. Mm. Quickly before we do that, we Beth. We do. Um, we've had a question asking how <laughs> to get Alexa to play Radio TT. Is this the thing now where I keep saying Alexa and everybody's Alexa oh, starts I, going I crazy? Hope so. Alexa, um, stop. Alexa, all you need to do is ask Alexa to play Manx Radio AM. It comes in off tune in, apparently. Okay. So uh, we are informed that that is how you do it. Um, and just want to say good morning to three guys from Birkenhead in a pod at Glenlock, which sounds a little bit dicey. One double six, one double seven. Start your message with TT. Email studio at radiott.com. Follow us on Manx Radio TT Facebook and Twitter pages and watch us on Facebook Live as well. We'll be back with the Met Office just after this.